So earlier this week, I looked down at my pedal board and it was a disaster. I had been pulling pedals from it one at a time to just use them for little one-off projects. And when I went to go use the whole board, I pulled it out of my closet and it was basically gutted. And I realized that I was going to have to just start over and put it back together. So I decided to call a professional for some guidance. And luckily for me, my dear friend from high school, Mr. Kyler Clark, was available on a Sunday afternoon to sit with me on Zoom and chat about pedals. Like, I look at it like this. A lot of times these sort of things seem scarier than they really are. I was tired of paying someone else to do stuff that just seems so simple. Like that's why I work on my own cars and stuff because I don't want to pay somebody else to do something that I can do. Kyler is a world-renowned touring guitar tech. He has toured with bands like Alice Cooper, Kiss, Smashing Pumpkins, tech for bands all over the world. He is one of my best friends from high school, which is very lucky for me. <laughs> So if you're rewiring your own pedal board and you want to work along with us, here are some things you're going to need. You will need a pedal board. You will need pedals. You're going to need adhesive Velcro or dual lock, which is what Kyler swears by. More on that in a minute. You're going to want a power supply. I use a one spot. You can also get a brick that goes on your pedal board. You're going to want some Velcro ties and you are going to want to have a couple of zip ties around. It really can't hurt to have a couple zip ties. Did I miss anything? Oh. <laughs> You're also gonna to wanna to have patch cables. If you've got the time, I recommend getting your board set up and then figuring out how many patch cables you need of each length. I also recommend ordering one extra of each length that you're getting just because it's nice to have a backup. All right, so with all that out of the way, wiring your pedal board is actually a pretty simple process. Let's dive in. The first thing you need to do when you're starting a new tour is go through every element of your pedal board and check everything. So I have a cable tester. It will test any kind of cabling. Um, this one is made by Morley. They make effects and everything too. It's super simple. You just turn it on. If there is a short in your cable, I'll unplug it so where like maybe one of the wires is not wired correctly or there's a ground short. The shape of this changes. You don't have to know how to fix cables, but this is a great way to know if you've got a bad cable. So that would be step one to a pedal board or a rig redo, is to check all of the cables that you have. <laughs> I can't tell you how many times it would have been really helpful for me on tour to have a cable tester. I am going to put the link to that in the description below so that I don't forget about it. <laughs> okay, so after that, the next step is to decide on the order of your pedals. If you have a DI, you're gonna want that to be the first thing that you plug into. And if you have a tuner, you're gonna come out of your DI into your tuner. Now, since my tuner mutes when you step on it, it could technically have gone anywhere in the signal flow. I just personally prefer it to be right after my DI. So for me, that meant we went from my DI into my polytune, out of my polytune into my body res, out of my body res into my octave pedal, out of my octave pedal into this delay from TC Electronics. Out of this delay into this other delay. It's a JHS Panther Cub, but Kyler keeps calling it the Meow Pedal because it has a cat on it. Last but not least, we ended with the 10 band MXR EQ, which I have never used before. A friend had given me this off of his board because he ran out of room for it and I'd always wanted one. And I honestly hadn't gotten it onto my board yet. So I'm excited to give it a try. Figuring out obviously the layout is the next thing how it's gonna, how it makes sense for you because you're the one who has to use it. So nobody really has to make sense for anybody else except the person that's using it. On your pedal board, you have just Velcro and there's Velcro on the back of everything. So that's great. Um, I use another thing called Dual Lock or um, Scotch, this stuff. Um, this stuff is like Velcro, but what it does is it snaps together almost like buttons, like hundreds of little buttons and it snaps together oh, dang. and it will not come loose like if you're if, you know you've got a baggage handler or somebody who's chucking your gear into a cargo hold your stuff's not going to come off it does it might it's really easy you know you just snap it back down so this i've laid out these little paper pedals where i think okay. that your um your gear should go based on signal flow You've got knobs and everything. I don't know how far they set up your treble and your boost knob. 
So you're traveling your boost knob, you want to be able to access those guys. You don't want them hanging over the edge. And what you also don't want is, let's say this is the edge of your pedal board and your pedal's sitting right over here, then your cable is going to be plugged in like that. And if you step on it by accident, you're going to break your cable. But if your pedal is in just a smidge and you've got just a little bit of buffer zone, then if you happen to step on it, you've got a little bit more security. So I would bring it in just an inch. Okay, so let's say that this is the input of the flashback. I know it's not, but let's just say. So if I plug that in there, then the cable is off of the edge before the connector. So if I step on it, I'm less likely to rip it out of the connector and damage the cable or the pedal. But if the input were closer to here, say, so that the jack was hanging off the side and I stepped on it, boom! Ugh, that would be such a bummer. And that's basically Kyler's job as a guitar tech, I realized, is avoiding bummers. And there's a different schools of thought as to like where you put effects and how you do them. Normally, um, I would put uh, any kind of delays and those sorts of things at the end of a signal chain um, and anything that's going to you want to affect your whole sound like an EQ or boosts and those sorts of things uh, you want to put those kind of at the beginning then we're going to go into your body res and then from there we'll jump over to your uh, sub nut into your EQ and then from there into your um, uh, the meow pedal. <laughs> and then from there, back into your effects loop. You know what? Actually, now that I'm thinking about it, I might change the whole scenario. That's fine. Well, yeah, because it's like, the, it's tricky because there's, there's the electrical, musical flow to consider, but then also just the physical, how do these things actually fit on this piece of metal? Right. And then, and you really have to think about this, this the flow of where, where things are going, like, how you're going to plug things in and all that sort of thing. Especially with right angle plugs, you don't want to run into a situation where you've got your your cables are all like, right, the way it's laid out there, it, it doesn't make any sense. All right, while you're brainstorming this, I'm going to go see if I can find one more piece of Velcro. I'll be right back. Okay, perfect. I'm going to think here. Well, while Rebecca is gone. Okay, so I don't know if you can see what I'm doing here. Here's what I want to do. Your XLR will come out of the bottom. So if that's there, then... And then we can put the polytune, yeah. Then your body res is another skinny pedal, right? Body res is another little skinny guy, yeah. Yep, that can go right there. You can bring your EQ up in front, up on top of your red eye. Then you're going to need to turn your sub nuff sideways. Now you've got room to move the meow pedal down towards the sub nut a little bit so that it's all the way on the pedal board. I mean, this order looks good to me. Um, yeah, it looks good. I mean, it's just a little weird because of the gap there. You could move your meow pedal over to the right. And then you, you'll be able to turn the sub nut pedal up so that it's facing correctly. Space everything out nicely so that you've got nice and easy access to all your cable and stuff. That's how I would do it right there. Okay, yeah, that feels good. The actual size and physical shape of the pedals is also gonna require consideration, and sometimes it'll require some compromises. On my board, for example, I might've wanted to put this 10 band EQ before my delays, but in order to make the puzzle work, we couldn't, we couldn't do it. And Kyler assured me it would be okay. <laughs> When I first got my pedal board, the first thing I did was cover the whole thing in soft-sided Velcro. Like so. See? Nice and soft. And that means I can put my pedals anywhere I want on the board. Next thing I did was cover the back of my pedals in hard-sided Velcro. Hot tip. If there are screws on the back of your pedal, which there are, there are screws. <laughs> That's how you get to the battery, not to mention all the electronics. So leave your options open, leave yourself access to that little screw. 
If you don't have your patch cables yet, this is also the point at which you measure for your patch cables. So I use these cables. They're by a Swedish company called EBS Premium Gold Flat Patch Cables. I chose them because they've got a right angle connector that's very flat and the cables themselves are very skinny so they don't take up much room and they make it easier to get more pedals on a smaller board, which is what I'm working with. So these are what I'm using. Basically, you want to bulletproof your pedal board so that everything is in place, nothing moves around, and all you're doing is plugging two things in, your guitar and your XLR because you're going into the house. Have things be as secure as possible. So what I was talking about with dual, with dual lock, I always like to use dual lock above, over Velcro or holding the pedals down just because they don't move. It's more secure. Basically, if you're flying and, and the pedal board gets jostled around and one of your pedals falls, off of the pedal board, then it's gonna pull on the cable that is pulling it to the other pedal board and run into a short that way. And it may not even be like a break, but it might weaken it enough to where it's intermittent. You know how it is when you're doing a gig, sometimes you're just jumping up on stage, throwing your thing down, plugging in and going, and the last thing you want is plugging in and going and going and not being able to get sound. So starting fresh, making sure that nothing's moving around, velcroing all your cabling down so that there's no movement, is just going to keep, that's going to prolong the life of the cabling that's that's holding all your stuff together. So while I was working on the board, I asked Kyler how he got into all of this in the first place, and he took it way back. Well, I, I was a, you know, I'm a musician. We met in, in high school, and I actually at, at Berkeley, I don't know if you ever met this guy, but when we were at Berkeley together, there was a guy named Wolf, and he showed me how to do minor guitar repair things. He was like Doc Brown with like the mad scientist stuff down there his lab they look like a lab so he was basically where i got interested in tweaking stuff and fixing things um i used that knowledge that he taught me and expounded on on that and started doing guitar repairs and in that i started working on pedal boards and mostly touring musicians who were living in la people would come back with problems that continually happen and so they're just like okay how do I stop this problem from happening? Just learning by necessity or learning due to trial and error, you know, screwing some of these stuff up and then learning from that mistake. And I was really lucky. I started to get asked to do more and more jobs and work uh, as a guitar technician and eventually got asked to go on tour. Uh, once I was on tour, then I'm rebuilding like big racks and stuff. And that was, that's really where, you know, you'll be in an arena somewhere in the middle of the afternoon and there's no time to take a piece of equipment somewhere to get it fixed so I, I, you have to fix it um, so that's where like soldering comes in handy as a as a tech or something like that so what kind of arena touring have you done when i first started touring i was doing like small little regional bands and stuff but eventually i i got asked to work with alice cooper but i've been with alice i think now next year is 15 years what do you do on tour with alice now now with him, I'm dealing with wardrobe stuff. Again, a similar attitude though, fixing things before they break so that they don't break right. on stage. But now it's like dealing with his schedule, keeping him on track, assisting to kind of getting him to and from places where he needs to go, interviews, phone calls. I mean, it's a nonstop job, emailing. I, start, I took over all the social media. In fact, when I first started, there wasn't any social media, so I built all that stuff up, and now there's a team of people now that helps do that. But um, for a long time, it was just me doing all those little things and just kind of documenting Alice on tour became a big thing. So then I really got tied into this photography stuff, um, which is really where a, a big part of my job now um, and something that I'm really found that I was very passionate about was documenting what's happening on tour in a candid way. So that's kind of led to some cool rewards as a photographer that, you know, I've sort of been able to develop my skill and uh, build this amazing like archive of photos of him and I have this great access to him that nobody else really has. So that's kind of, I've now transitioned from one job to something completely different. Well, thank you for indulging me in answering questions. Um, let's get back to the pedal board, but why don't you turn your air conditioning on? We'll get it all plugged in and then we'll deal with where we're gonna put your cables. I like to run cables underneath as long as they aren't gonna bunch up and get pressure put on the thing uh, underneath it. So, okay, so then you've got your polytune and your to your body res. Let's use one of those shorties to there. 
Um, then we're going to run the, uh, the next one over just from your body res into your sub nut there. Then we're going to run one of your longer ones over into your input and that's on the far right is your input. Great. Um, and then we're going to do out from that over into your MXR and you'll see how they lay this when you bring that over it'll lay on top of the other one. No, I mean, um, yeah, actually try that first. And will that go into your effects loop return? Yeah, that works surprisingly. Okay, and then what about your... It's not the tidiest. No, but we'll clean that stuff up too. Um, would that replace the long cable between the meow pedal and the MXR um, EQ? Hooray! And what we'll do is we'll take some of that Velcro and you can just run like a little tiny one straight straight on top of it just just literally run it right on top to hold the cable in place you can you might have to cut it i actually wonder if we should switch the fender cable and this cable okay let me try that all right so everything is secured now so now um we can we can flip it over and do your uh velcro strips underneath there on the opposite side, do a similar scenario with that guy. Yeah. They'll stick that right to the bottom of that pedal. And some people do zip ties, and but the the problem with zip ties is that once it's on there, if you've got a cable that breaks or goes bad, you have to uncut. You have to cut the zip tie. Velcro, you can just yank it out and swap it out really quick. And one of the key things that I'm noticing about your pedal board is that you have labeled your pedal board with your contact information. Very important. Okay, that's great. It's looking so good. Look at this. That looks great, right? Yeah, it looks fantastic. So you've tested your cables, you've picked your order, you've secured everything in place. The next step is to go mad with power. Wait, no, it's to run power. Next step is to run power. So let's take that that piece right there, the very end of the of the daisy chain. Let's wrap that with a piece of the opposite Velcro. And then just, you know, that way that's that way that stays in place. And then you'll run the power can just come in on that top right corner. The one spot will just plug right into that. That is one of the things that I would, if it were me, I would use a, a zip tie and zip tie that, that power thing in place so that it doesn't move at all. The blue zip tie. The closest one is going to be the the meow pedal. Go head up to the head up to the blue pedal. I think it's kind of on the top left, right? Yeah. Bring that other one down over to your the right side of the body res, and then up to your MXR. And I think that's the last one, right? Yeah. Cool. I would take slack and fold it onto itself and wrap that sucker, tuck the slack underneath there, and we'll pull it through and make it lay flat, and that way it won't be all spaghettified on the top. Yeah, so I would even tuck that big wad of cabling under there. Dun, dun, dun. And this is the final thing. We've got my DI into my tuner, into the body res, into my octave pedal, into my first delay, second delay, and then my EQ. And that is how we play our game, everybody. Thank you so much for watching along. And at this point, you're done. Congratulations, you did it. Do a happy dance, yay. But if you'd like to see a demonstration video in which I show you all of the pedals on my board and how I use them, let me know in the comments below. Thank you guys so much for watching this. This is still a really new project for me. I'm enjoying it. I love chatting with you guys here on YouTube. So if you have any questions about this pedal board process for me or for Kyler, I can see if I can get him to answer. Let me know in the comments below. If you liked the video, click the thumbs up. And if you wanna hear me do more of these, subscribe, click the bell notification so you know when my newest video comes out and keep an eye on the channel. I'll be back soon. Thank you guys so much. Take care. Yeah.